Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this morning. As we gather today, we take this time to center ourselves in this time and in this space. But we also begin with a handful of announcements. So um, if you've been paying attention up here, we try to get the announcements rolling um, up here since we're not doing the memo yet. Uh, but just a handful of things that I do really want to point out for um, the next week or two. Uh, Bill Heppelwhite must have just dropped these off this morning. So if you want a church calendar, the box is in the back. And I pulled some right here in the front. So help yourself. There's more than enough uh, calendars. So we thank Bill for doing that every year. Next Sunday is Stewardship Sunday. So I thank everyone that has already uh, sent in their pledge card. Um, if you have not, please consider doing so. Um, but along with the pledge card this year, we've asked people to fill out a survey. Uh, so if you are gathering with us virtually, and um, would like to make sure that your input is, is heard in this um, survey, um, and as well as those that are gathered here today. But we'd like to know, during this time, um, past year and a half, going on two years of this pandemic, you know, really, what are our spiritual needs, and how can we as a church really move forward to address your needs? Um, that's what we're here for, and if we don't want, know what those needs are, we can't um, do the proper um, soul care that we would like to be able to do. Also, poinsettias need to be ordered a little bit earlier. Uh, we've also already received a handful of these, so thank you for those that have put their orders in. We do need them by the end of November uh, the 28th. So. Make sure you grab a poinsettia um, order form if you would like to uh, dedicate flowers in honor or memory of someone. And then the deacons, I went ahead and put the deacon, some of the wonderful items that have come in. Um, we are do, the deacons are doing a wellness drive this year and um, the chapel area is overflowing with laundry detergent and shampoos and toothbrushes and toothpaste and um, other items, so thank you all. We dedicate these um, this Sunday, even though Thanksgiving's still another full week away, um, because social services needs them before Thanksgiving Day. So our deacons will be bringing these items over to social services on Friday. So there's still time this week to drop off items if you haven't already, um, but they do want to have them ready and available for families um, before Thanksgiving. And um, Rick will be here, I think, on Friday morning between yeah, yeah. 8 and 9 a.m., super early, for anyone that has um, a frozen turkey that they want to donate. So, and it needs to be frozen. So please um, see Rick if you have any questions about donating a turkey, but he will be here to get those over to social services. Are there any other um, announcements for today? Sue. Uh, yes, Home for the Holidays is coming. I think I've talked to most people here, but if you'd like to, we're having a bake sale. It's December 4th from 11 to 3, and uh, we need items to sell for the bake sale and also some helpers. Please see me. We're going to be selling uh, coffee, tea, and hot chocolate and in the baked goods. Thank you. Kathy. So this week, the mission committee went through all of our donated holiday items, and we have wonderful things that will be for sale on Home for the Holidays, gently used Christmas items. We hope you'll uh, come see and buy some things from us to support the mission of the church. Great. And just so you know, if I'm here a little tired next Sunday, um, we are taking four youth 
on a high school retreat to Camp Johnsonburg this next weekend. So <laughs> keep us in your prayers uh, this next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, oh, the tree. Um, yes, so the tree is set up out here. Um, a lot of tags have been taken, but if you'd like to grab a tag, um, toys have already arrived in the chapel as well. So we are off to a great start for our toy march, toy drive. Um, but please, if you have not already grabbed your tag, um, and those of you, again, that might be watching this virtually, you can just call the church office and find out uh, what toy or book item is needed. Uh, pretty much um, anything can be brought in that's not um, a violent toy type of um, gun-related thing. So, um, and then the families get to do their own shopping, so please don't wrap them. They um, set this beautiful space up and the parents get to go in and pick out the toys and then do the wrapping themselves. So, all right, um, let us take this time now to center ourselves um, as in music as we prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in our responsive call to worship, which comes from the Canadian Food Grains Bank. God of love and justice, we gather together to worship you, to offer our thanks and praise, and to proclaim your goodness and mercy. Meet us here, breathe your word into our souls, Engrave your covenant of love 
upon our hearts. Teach us faithfulness and compassion so that our lives may reflect your love and justice in the world. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Give Thanks, O Christian People, which can be found on page 552 of your hymnal. Our responsive prayer today is written by Christine Longhurst. Let us pray. Generous God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have shown us what it means to love, and you call us to follow your example, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Continue to write your law of love on our hearts. Give us an unwavering passion for justice and a tenacious faith that will not rest until the hungry are fed, the oppressed find relief, and the outsider finds a welcome. Amen. Friends, hear these words that Paul writes in his letter to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and extend hospitality to strangers. 
If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Friends, this is the good news. Let us take a moment now to share the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Our responsive hymn today is 553 in your hymnal um, for the fruit of all creation, but I believe this one we're using a different melody. So the melody actually is from the, the purple um, Glory to God hymnal, but the words, if you want to use your hymnal, are there, or you may, of course, look on the screen. Our first scripture reading comes from Deuteronomy, and it is about the ancient practice of gleaning. I've talked about gleaning before, so hopefully this is not something that sounds too unfamiliar to you. And I believe our window here, which is the story um, of the book of Ruth, shows an example of Ruth out gleaning um, in the field. So it's right here with us. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's what that is. When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you shall not go back and get it. It shall be left for the alien, the orphan, and the widow, so that the Lord your God may bless you in all your undertakings. When you beat your olive trees, do not strip what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. 
When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, do not glean what is left. It shall be for the alien, the orphan, and the widow. Remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Therefore, I am commanding you to do this. Our anthem today is called, I'm going to eat at the welcome table. Our second passage today is the story of Zacchaeus. I don't know why I had Nicodemus in my head. (laughs) It's one of those moments of (laughs) confusion. Zacchaeus. So here are these words from Luke 19. I guess I need more than glasses this morning. (laughs) He, that is Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man was there named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay it back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out 
and save the lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So this past week, there was a news piece on the Today Show about a woman, I believe you pronounce her name, Naven Salem. Now she had heard something about this food product called Plumpy Nut. Now Plumpy Nut is a nutritional food that has been used to help starving children. It's a peanut-based paste that's packaged in a plastic wrapper and it's used for severe treatments or for treatment of severe acute malnutrition and it's manufactured by a French company. This product has a two-year shelf life. It requires no water, no preparation, and no refrigeration refrigeration. Because of its ease to use and no concern about contaminated water um, being used, it has become um, a very viable resource to treat malnutrition in various parts of the world. Plumpy Nut is packed with calories and vitamins, and it's used to restore the health of children under the age of five. The special thing about it is that unlike a milk formula, it doesn't need to be mixed with anything, like clean water, and it doesn't need to be refrigerated. This makes it so much easier to deliver it to children in places where clean water and refrigeration don't exist. Well, this woman that I mentioned earlier, Naven Salem, had, had heard about this, and she was so moved by the need of this plumpy nut and the potential to help these children that she decided that she wanted to be a part of this solution. In the news report, she said she called the company twice asking how she could um, create a, a production plant here in the United States. And she said they would hang up the phone on her. She didn't get anywhere. So she literally flew to France to speak to them in person to make this happen. And by showing up, they listened. And this woman has now created a production plant here in the United States in Rhode Island to produce this nutritional food that can be used by children all around the world. She says, I truly believe that we can end hunger and malnutrition. Feeding people, providing food, especially people in extreme crisis, is an act of justice. Nate and Salem felt she could not wait until her own young children got older to do something about world hunger. She was a mom of three young children. She was said she was a stay-at-home mom changing diapers, but she felt that this was something that she had to act on immediately because she was a mom and she couldn't let other moms see their children die of starvation. She felt it was something that had to be addressed immediately, and she radically changed her entire life in order to make a difference. In the book that we've been looking at, Cynthia Campbell's book, God's Abundant Table, she says that food is a matter of justice. And so we go to that ancient glean, practice of gleaning, of leaving some of that food in the fields or in the orchard in order for others to come and pick their own food. It is an act of justice. All people deserve food. 
but what happens when some people don't have the means in that day and age to grow their own food or in that day and age to work, to pay for their own food? Now, society needs to create alternative ways to provide food for everyone if a society is one that is just. Not all societies necessarily think that way. But a just society is going to want to ensure that people are fed. So gleaning was one of those original forms of a food pantry or a soup kitchen. Now in her book, <clears throat> Cynthia Campbell distinguishes a difference between charity and justice. She says, charity is what we freely give to or for the benefit of others. So charity is giving, what we give freely to benefit others. But justice is treating others fairly. So one is about the giving of items. The other is about the treatment of people. She states that these biblical laws of caring for the widow, the orphan, the alien, and the lands are not acts of charity, but rather are laws of justice. Our God is a just God, and our God desires us to treat each other fairly. Right? God has created these laws so that the people of God form their society around what God wants them to do. They don't need the mayor or the town council or any of the other people to make the laws because they are the laws of their faith. Now the word just, which we get justice from, is defined as acting or being in conformity with what is morally upright or good. And charity is the act of giving money or food or other kinds of help to people who are poor or sick. So perhaps this is an act of, of charity because we're giving um, items, right? We're giving items. So as I was trying to unpack the difference between charity and justice, I wondered, I wondered if charity maybe addresses that immediate need and justice does something to actually tr change the structure or the system that causes the need, right? We are responding to a need here because food stamps, government assistance, doesn't provide for these items. So that's the system, is that people that need financial help to buy these sort of items, they don't, that's not part of what the government gives. The government gives towards food, but these items are just as much needed, right? So the system is something we are responding to. It reminds me of that old adage, give a man a fish and he eats for a day, but teach a man to fish and he eats for a lifetime. Right? Charity can kind of be the band-aid, whereas justice can be the, um, the solution, the, the full change, the um, transformation, where a person no longer needs just that band-aid, but they're fully healed and whole. Justice moves the world. It moves the world in the direction of doing what is right, not just for one's own self, but what is right for the whole? God desired that the Israelite people live in a just community, right? That the community cared and knew and um, responded to each other's needs. It was a community that focused on treating people fairly. Now we do our best in our modern to model these ancient examples in the work that we do. Right? But I think what is, is challenging is how much larger our communities have become over generations. For those of you that grew up here, 
you've seen how much larger the town has become. Right? You don't know your neighbors the same way as you did 50 years ago. The high school classes are bigger, so you might not know all of the students in your class, whereas 50 years ago, maybe you did. Right? It's, it's, it's harder to be community as we grow bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's important to have little communities inside of large communities. <clears throat> So that makes it harder to know what people might need. Right? Who's falling through the cracks? Now, I've seen on social media people advocating for others, giving out a cry of help for people in need. And what I see is this response of strangers helping strangers because they're on the same social media platform and it becomes some sort of sacred community of love. It truly is beautiful. Now in the book, The Abundant Table, she gives some little study questions, or reflection questions. And so she looks at this text of Deuteronomy. She says, why is there resistance to giving everyone equal access to enough food? Why is there resistance? Now, if you pay attention to um, things like what's the food stamp program, SNAP, you might hear, depending on what year it is, that the government needs to cut that program. And so families aren't going to get as much aid as they need. Um, or you might hear people campaigning to um, improve it. And then other people crying out, well, who's going to pay for it, right? It kind of comes down to the dollar. The resistance on ensuring that everybody has equal access to enough food really is financial, or that word taxes. <clears throat> also, within our food pantry system, there, um, there can be issues on funding. So some food pantries have to check IDs and make sure that you qualify to receive that food because that's how they get funded. Again, it comes back to the, the money. Whereas there's other food pantries that don't get special funding and have to raise their own money, but they can give food to anyone. So whether you're here with um, the proper documentation or not. So there could be resistance to making sure people that are undocumented receive food. And then there's the hours that food pantries and soup kitchens are open. We might not even think about that, but there are people out there that are working that still need assistance. And that can be a resistance. Why are the hours only these that make it so hard for working people to get the extra help that they need. We've been talking about that here in town with the mission team, our mission committee here in the church with um, the Roxbury Social Services hours. They're very limited and they are during the time of day that many people are working. They don't have any nighttime or weekend hours, right? So how do we treat people fairly? How do we make it just? And why is there resistance? And then there's those that just don't even have transportation, right? They can't get a bus to Horseshoe Lake, or it costs too much to get a taxi or a ride um, to get the help that they need. And so as people think about the resistance, the issues that block others, the creativity tries to, to figure out solutions. So Meals on Wheels was developed to try to address the issues of older people that might not have transportation or means of getting food and to bring those meals right to their home. So that was a wonderful way that someone creatively said, how do we address this issue to ensure that people get food? And so we think about the ways that we give 
what might block people from actually receiving, or what it is to, um, to give and what it is to actually change the system. So what I see about the story of Nicodemus. Nicodemus, he's a tax collector, and he has, am I saying the right name? No, Zacchaeus. See, I knew I messed up somewhere. Zacchaeus. Forget that I said Nicodemus. <laughs> I had him on the brain. Oh, my goodness. So the story of Zacchaeus, right? I had it correct that he is the tax collector. I just got his name mixed up. But right, he went to, the, to follow the crowds. Like all these people are going out to see this guy, Jesus, and he wanted to be a part of it. And he's climbed up this tree, and, and Jesus just, I don't know, randomly picks him out of the crowd. And he says, Zacchaeus, I'm going to go home and eat with you. And then the text tells us that all who saw it began to grumble and say, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. So everybody knew that Zacchaeus was not a good person. So why did this guy, Jesus, go to eat with him? Well, in the act of breaking bread together, Zacchaeus' life is transformed. He repents of defrauding people of their money, and he proclaims that he will restore what he has taken from others, not just of equal value, but four times of what he took. Somewhere in their conversation together, Zacchaeus became self-aware. He became self-aware that the way he had been living was not one that was in alignment with God. He had created his own rules, his own laws, not the sacred ones that his God had asked him to live by. He doesn't seem to need much time for soul searching. I might say, I need a week to think about this. But he responds quickly that he is going to change his behavior immediately. I see Zacchaeus as representing that unjust system, right? If only acts of transformation could happen that quickly. Zacchaeus represented a system of oppression brought on by the Roman rule, right? This tax that he was collecting wasn't for his local community. It wasn't going to benefit them. It was to go to Rome to help build a stronger army that could go and conquer more people or make sure that the conquered people stayed contained, right? But once Zacchaeus encounters the divine, once he's opened up to the ways of God, once he's able to see the world in a way other than through his own self-needs, he's transformed. He is able to live a more just life rather than one focused on his own self-gain. His transformation is generous. It returns what he has taken with abundance. God calls us to live just lives. Our society seeks for us to live just lives. Okay? We have so many laws of the land. And most of those laws are to keep good values and uphold good moral values that we seek to live by. But we also need to know and understand that we aren't just members of our local community, state, country. We are people of faith. And so we need to know more deeply what the laws of God are. Right? We, we've got the Ten Commandments. God's given us those, and we do our best to seek to follow and live by them. 
but we are to live in a way that not only ensures that the basic needs of others are provided for, but actually to seek to find ways to transform the systems and structures that work against people. Right? Zacchaeus was working against people, and Jesus went and changed at least that one person's structure of how he worked in the world. So in this holiday season, as we move through Thanksgiving and Christmas, let us not only participate in acts of generous charity, I mean, that's important, but let us also be agents of God's justice and doing what is right as we seek to care for one another. Amen. At this time, we come together to share our joys and our concerns with one another. Are there prayers to be shared today? Um, pray for the family of Dick Tron, uh, local uh, Roxbury Supper Center person. Okay, so prayers for the family of Dick Fromm. Prayers for Jesse. Um, just uh, kind of a, I guess, a joy. The Roxbury Clergy Council is doing our best to come back together this year for the Interfaith Thanksgiving service, which will be a week from today in the evening over at Temple Shalom. So if you don't um, have that information and you want to know more about it, we do have some flyers floating around. Also, there's two major food drives happening this week. So if you or someone you know does not have the food they need, um, Table of Hope is doing a big Thanksgiving food distribution at the community college on Friday. And I always get confused, excuse, I'm sorry, I just not know clearly, but either Kiwanis or Rotary is doing the food drive at Redeemer Lutheran on Saturday morning. Kiwanis? Kiwanis? Okay. Um, so there's two opportunities, one on Friday at Community College, one on Saturday at um, Redeemer Lutheran. So if you know someone in the community that can benefit, please make sure that they... Um, they know that these food opportunities are available. Okay. Others? Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, it is truly remarkable to see how communities can come together, especially when times have been so hard and Various finances have been stretched so thin. But this is a time where we live into our feast. And so we want to ensure that all people in our communities are fed over the next few weeks, months. And um, resources just do seem to, to materialize. And so we pray for those that are working behind the scenes to make things like that happen. We pray for the workers that um, are at the, produ or at the um, food production factories that make plumpy nuts, that are dedicated to making sure children in this world are fed. Uh, for those that run the community food banks and coordinate with others that access um, food is mobilized to um, distribution sites so that it can be used and not thrown away. It takes a lot of work, and it takes people's hearts and commitment and passion to make it happen. You created us to be these people. Help us to find those opportunities to either say thank you 
or to walk alongside of, to help out in whatever way we are able. Um, loving God, and if we are so called, help us to be those agents that want to do more, where we look at the very structures of what causes um, this discrepancy in people's lives and, um, and help to figure out how to not just provide for a day, but to teach people to be able to um, be transformed into a sustainable future. And so, loving God, this day, we, we just pray for those that perhaps are, are homebound and lonely and isolated and um, concerned about tomorrow. Um, we pray for those that continue to, uh, to work in our hospitals and care for those that are sick. We pray for those that are working tirelessly, researching this virus and ways that um, a vaccine and other um, treatments can ensure um, a healthier future for all of us. Help us to just stop and listen to this world, to its needs, to its love, to its compassion the ways in which people seek to just do good. Loving God, we lift up to you both our deacons and our mission committee and, and the generous ways that they use the, their treasures of this church to provide gifts to Homeless Solution and Family Promise and Faith Kitchen and Roxbury Social Services and the Jersey Battered Women's Shelter in Camp Johnsonburg. There's a lot of goodness breaking forth in this world. And now as your people in this place, let us unite our voices together and pray what Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen our closing hymn today is 428 we give thee but thine own. Now, as I send you out into the world, in whatever way you are able to engage it, 
I send you out as God's people. People that, yes, do acts of charity, but also people who seek to be bearers of God's justice. Let us care for each and every one around us, and let us seek to bring transformation into this world. And now may the grace and peace of God the Father Almighty, the reconciliation of the Son, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one, now and forever. Amen.